What's up everyone welcome back to another lecture on blood gas the main scope of this lecture is to make blood gas interpretation as easy as possible if you are new here hi my name is dr shrivasha i am a clinical pathologist currently working in bangalore blood collection techniques treatment options for different uh, acid base disturbances are beyond the scope of today's presentation to your right side a real blood gas report is attached so the important parameters to check are the ph pco2 bicarbonate with base excess anion gap calculated osmolarity which is optional electrolytes and lactate as we all know the normal ph range is between 7.35 and 7.45 ph less than 7.35 indicates acidemia whereas ph more than 7.45 indicates alkalemia there is a difference between acidemia and acidosis acidemia is the state of low ph acidosis is the process leading to the state of acidemia this applies for alkalemia and alkalosis major contributing factors to metabolic acidosis are high higher concentration of hydrogen ion chloride and lactate and major contributing factors for alkalemia are higher concentration of bicarbonate levels and low chloride levels in acid base report the analytes are broadly divided into respiratory and metabolic components pco2 is a respiratory component as we expire carbon dioxide via lungs bicarbonate is a metabolic component as kidneys either excrete or reabsorb bicarbonate based upon the need and compensatory mechanism coming to the patterns in acid base report high pco2 causes respiratory acidosis as pco2 is acid component low pco2 can lead to respiratory alkalosis similarly low bicarbonate can cause metabolic acidosis and high bicarbonate can lead to metabolic alkalosis apart from these chloride and lactate can also contribute to metabolic acidosis remember hydrochloric acid and lactic acid compensatory mechanisms are always double opposites metabolic will be compensated by respiration and acidosis will be compensated by alkalosis this is why i said double opposites so metabolic acidosis will be compensated by respiratory alkalosis metabolic alkalosis will be compensated by respiratory acidosis respiratory acidosis will be compensated by metabolic alkalosis and respiratory alkalosis will be compensated by metabolic acidosis organs involved are kidneys and lungs this picture will help you figure out the basic renal physiology the major reabsorption of sodium potassium chloride and bicarbonate happens in proximal convoluted tubules whereas secretion of hydrogen ion takes place in the distal convoluted tubule how the kidney really helps in compensation is through exchange of hydrogen ions for sodium in tubular fluid reabsorption of bicarbonate from tubular fluid formation of ammonia and excretion of ammonium ion in urine excretion of hydrogen ion as dihydrogen phosphate in urine so basically the kidney can alter the ph of blood and urine just by excreting what is unnecessary and by conserving what is necessary by the way guys i drew this picture so let me know in the comments if you really like my drawings to find out whether compensation is happening or not you can consider using one of these formulae there are two important rules about compensation the body does not overcompensate compensation does not return the ph to normal range these are the two formulae that you can use the first one is simple and the second formula has a lot of maths and it gives the result in a range as the correction factor such as plus or minus 3 in case of metabolic acidosis and plus or minus 2 in case of metabolic alkalosis are used you may wonder why there is a decimal 0.7 in the second formula to understand that let's look at this table in metabolic acidosis for every 1 millimole per liter decrease in bicarbonate pco2 will decrease by 0.7 mm of mercury the compensatory response for metabolic acidosis is respiratory alkalosis so decreasing in pco2 will cause alkalosis same way in metabolic alkalosis for every 1 millimole per liter increase in bicarbonate pco2 will increase by 0.7 mm of mercury to make it respiratory acidosis which is the compensation for metabolic alkalosis 
to estimate compensation for respiratory acid base disturbances this is the formula you can use normal bicarbonate is in the range of 18 to 22 millimoles per liter in order to use in this formula you can consider a mid range of 20 millimoles per liter as normal bicarbonate here similarly pco2 is also between a range of 36 and 44 millimeters of mercury to be able to use in this formula a mid range of 40 can be considered as normal pco2 and you can also see many decimals which is represented as y you may want to look at the table in order to understand better in acute respiratory acidosis for every 1 mm mercury increase in pco2 bicarbonate increases by 0.15 millimoles per liter in acute respiratory alkalosis for every 1 mm mercury decrease in pco2 bicarbonate decreases by 0.25 millimoles per liter Similarly, in chronic respiratory acidosis, for every 1 mm mercury increase in PCO2, bicarbonate increases by 0.35 millimoles per liter. And in chronic respiratory alkalosis, for every 1 mm mercury decrease in PCO2, bicarbonate decreases by 0.55 millimoles per liter. So, the next set of calculations includes anion gap. This is the formula, and this is the reference range in dogs and cats. We should also be estimating corrected, corrected bicarbonate level, calculated osmolarity. This is the formula. And we should also be estimating osmolar gap. Sodium potassium ratio and corrected chloride should also be estimated. Anion gap can be considered only when there is metabolic acidosis. Based upon the calculated results, anion gap can be classified as high, low, or normal. In case if the calculated result of anion gap is high, then you need to check corrected bicarbonate as high anion gap metabolic acidosis can also have ongoing normal anion gap metabolic acidosis or metabolic alkalosis. These two conditions can coexist. Measured bicarbonate plus anion gap minus 14 will give you the corrected bicarbonate level. If corrected bicarbonate is more than 22, then metabolic alkalosis is happening simultaneously. If corrected bicarbonate is less than 22, then normal anion gap metabolic acidosis is happening simultaneously. If hypoalbuminemia is present, then correction for hypoalbuminemia should be considered as albumin is an anion. For every 1 gram per deciliter lesser than normal range, you need to add 2.5 to the anion gap. The difference between the measured osmolarity and calculated osmolarity will give you the osmolar gap. Calculated osmolarity can be estimated using the formula discussed in the previous slide. Measured osmolarity can be estimated with the help of osmometer. Osmolar gap cannot exceed 10. Osmolar gap more than 10 indicates the presence of unmeasured osmols. For example, methanol, ethanol and ethylene glycol. These toxicities will have high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Normal osmolarity in dogs is 290 millimoles per liter. Normal osmolarity in cats is 300 millimoles per liter. Whether acid base disturbance is present or not, corrected chloride should always be estimated. This is the formula. This table will help you understand the significance of corrected chloride better. Corrected chloride will help us to differentiate artifactual imbalance in chloride from true chloride imbalance. You need to estimate alveolar arterial oxygen gradient if you draw arterial blood. Alveolar arterial gradient is a measure of the difference between the alveolar concentration of oxygen and the arterial concentration of the oxygen. It is useful parameter for narrowing down the differential diagnosis of hypoxemia. The AA gradient helps to access the integrity of the alveolar capillary unit. The partial pressure of oxygen in arteries can be measured using pulse oximetry. Whereas partial pressure of oxygen in alveoli, which is capital A, needs to be calculated using the parameters such as FiO2, barometric pressure, and vapor pressure of water. FiO2 indicates the oxygen concentration in the atmosphere, which is 21% or 0 0.21. Barometric pressure is 760 millimeters mercury. Vapor pressure of water is 47 millimeters mercury. And respiratory quotient is 0 0.8. The difference between barometric pressure and vapor pressure of water multiplied by FiO2 will give you a value of 149.73. P 
PaCO2 is measured in ABG report which can be used here. Now the difference between 149.73 and PaCO2 divided by 0.8 will give you the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. As I said earlier, the difference between the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli minus the partial pressure of oxygen in the artery will give you the AA gradient. Healthy animals can only have AA gradient varying between 0 and 10. Anything more than 10 is abnormal. The AA gradient between 10 and 20 indicates mild pulmonary dysfunction. AA gradient more than 20 indicates parenchymal interstitial alveolar problems, sometimes pulmonary edema and bronchitis. A very high AA gradient which is more than 25 usually indicates pulmonary thromboembolism. So that's a wrap everyone. If you had trouble understanding the concepts, please leave a comment. Follow me on Instagram for regular updates. Very soon part 2 of blood gas lecture will be released which will contain real life cases. Please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more educational content. Thank you for being here. Take care. Bye.